So welcome everybody to the latest TILT webinar, TILT standing for Technology and Language Teaching. Uh, today's date is the 30th of September 2021 and we're in for a real treat tonight because we have the amazing Vicky Sawmel, who I've known personally for quite a few years. Um, I'm not sure exactly the first time we met face to face probably would have been 2013 at the ISL like conference. Yep. Um, but we've been connect we were connected way before that. Um, and like myself, Vicky has a, a has an absolute passion for educational technology and how it can be used uh, in the languages classroom. And today her talk is, as you can see, exploring the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs for short, through digital projects in primary education. So I'm going to hand over now to Vicky. Uh, we're going to run for about an hour or so. If you have any questions, as per normal, can you put them in the chat? We are recording the session right now, which will be, which will be made available on my YouTube channel um, after the uh, the session, which is available at Joe Dale 100. So if you want to check out the recording, um, feel free to uh, go there. So thank you so much, Vicky, for, uh, for um, uh, agreeing to do this. Do you want to tell us what time it is, which country you're in at the moment for the audience Ooh, and uh, sure. introduce yourself? Give, give us a, a potted history about your interest in, in educational <laughs> technology and language teaching. Well, um, I was born and I live in Argentina, in Buenos Aires. So it's 4 p.m. here, uh, and it's, uh, it's a bit dark because it has been raining all day, <laughs> so it's a bit gloomy. So I had to turn all the lights on, even though it, it should be, uh, there should be enough daylight. <laughs> um, so, oh, I'm passionate for, for, for learning technologies. I think it started way back uh, with an EVO session. I don't know if you're familiar with EVO sessions. Um, they are uh, organized by TESOL and there are six week courses that run through uh, January and February on a variety of uh, topics and they are online. And I took a course called Becoming a Webhead. Uh, and of course, I didn't know really much about that. Uh, I only knew it was about using technology for language learning. Uh, so I learned a lot about digital tools, I became a webhead. I'm a proud webhead, so there are webheads all over the world. Uh, and we, we are uh, ambassadors for the meaningful use of technology in, in language learning. So um, I'm, I'm really, really proud to be a part of them. And they started my passion on it and then my own curiosity, uh, exploring and doing and of course, being a teacher and having uh, my students to uh, experiment with in, 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 a, in a good way, uh, like trying things and seeing what works, what doesn't, uh, reading a lot, reading, 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 trying, trying, trying. Uh, and uh, so then I got involved with Aya Tefl, uh, and I am currently the coordinator for the learning technologies special interest group. Uh, so I don't know, it's been a long journey, a very long journey and still learning and still enjoying uh, using technology with my students. Uh, so first, be before, we, before we move on with a little bit more about myself and what I do and, and where I did all these projects that I'm going to show you today, uh, I would like to know two things, if you could answer in the chat box. Uh, the first is um, whether you know anything about the SDGs. Have you heard of them before? Can you type just yes, no, a little bit? Okay, then that's a real good way to go back. Let me go back to the first slide and uh, tell you a little bit about the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, a few years ago, the United Nations got together and they, um, they, they drew yeah, an agenda of uh, 17 goals uh, for sustainable development uh, to be met by 2030. And so there's, there are lots and lots of information about these goals. 
and it's very easy to go online and find the official website and lots of resources to work on these goals. And um, if you're teaching languages, any language at any level, and you are using a course book, for example, uh, most of the topics included in your course books can be tied up or connected to a sustainable development goal. So it's very easy to work with them. And uh, I think we owe it to our students to uh, teach them uh, how to make our world better. So I thought, well, why don't we? Why don't we use sustainable development goals as the topic of our projects um, and have my students use uh, language effectively to talk about this? Uh, so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing I want to ask is, um, and I'm going to put up my, my poll number three, but since we are uh, very few, you don't need to go to Slido and you can answer uh, because I had prepared an active poll, but we are so, so, so few. So I would like to know what language you teach uh, because I am a native Spanish speaker and I teach English. Uh, it would be lovely to know what language you teach. Super. French, Spanish, super, great. So, the idea here is that I'm going to show you uh, some project ideas that I developed for learning English, but of course this can be applied to any language. Uh, so uh, all the information you will see is in English, but of course it can be adapted to really any language. So uh, it's very, very um, uh, appropriate for all of us. Let me tell you a little bit more about myself. Uh, and the context of what I'm going to show you today. The picture you see is the picture of one of the schools where I work. I work in two schools. Uh, in the morning, I work in a secondary school where I teach the last year of secondary school, so 17 year olds. Uh, and I teach curricular English. So I'm an English teacher. Um, now in the afternoon, I work in this school, which is a primary school, a bilingual school. Uh, students have, uh, Spanish instruction in the mornings and English instruction in the afternoons. Uh, and um, I am not a classroom teacher. I am a digital projects teacher, if you ever heard of that. <laughs> so uh, mainly what I do is I uh, talk to classroom teachers and they tell me what they are working on. And I develop digital projects uh, for students to do with me in the computer lab where we have 11 computers where students can work. So students come to my computer lab and they, my, I have appropriated it. <laughs> so they come to the computer lab and uh, they work with me uh, on different digital projects. Um, this school has more than 500 students, students from year one to seven. Uh, so they are aged six to 12 year olds uh, and uh, there are 21 classes. There are three classes for each form. So three year ones, three year twos, three year threes and so on. Uh, before the pandemic, I used to have all the classes. So I used to teach the 21 classes on a rotation schedule model. So I would see all of my students every 20 days. So once every 20 days, I would finish the rotation and then I would start again and I would see all of them again. Um, now, the pandemic brought some changes and this year I am only teaching three, three, three years, uh, year four, year five and year six. Uh, and sometimes we switch one of the classes, but mainly, but I know all of them. What I'm going to show you are the projects that I did with them before the pandemic working face-to-face -face, uh, with all the classes from year one to year seven. And this was because uh, our coordinator um, thought that the SDGs were really, really important. 
and she wanted all the classes and all the teachers to do some kind of work related to the SDGs. So since SDGs uh, lend themselves pretty well for project work, uh, uh, I decided that I was going to, to, to do this and I really, really, really enjoyed it. So um, let's dive into our projects. Um, what was the aim of the school project, the overall project? The aim was that we wanted to expose all the students to the different SDGs. And in this sense, uh, the teachers, the classroom teachers decided which goals they wanted to work on, depending on, the, of course, the student's age and uh, how they were going to work on it, depending on their language level. So it was mainly about finding appropriate connections in action plans according to the learners' ages. And also, it was not just about learning about the SDG, but it was about developing insights into transformative action. So what we were trying to do with students was, okay, this is the problem. What can we do to solve it? What kind of action, yes, can we develop at school to solve this problem? And of course, all this had to be done according, as I said before, to their language level and to their age. So it was the classroom teachers who essentially decided which SDGs and uh, particular topics we were touching upon. And so what I did was to take that into consideration and create projects for the classes, okay? Um, so with our school year goes from March, March to December. Uh, and so in March, when we started, uh, you will see that the progression of the, of the projects, we started with something quite simple and we moved on to a more complex types of projects towards the end of the year, when students were already familiar with some of the things we had been working on. Um, so in year seven, it was natural. They had already learned a lot about taking care of the planet. And so uh, we did an awareness uh, uh, raising activity where they had to create posters uh, to identify five problems uh, that the earth faced and uh, point out five solutions. So five problems, five solutions. Um, and that was a kind of brainstorming activity that we did even before these students started working with their teachers on the SDGs for, for that year. Uh, so what we wanted to do is say, okay, what do you know? Uh, let's pull ideas together and create some posters to see where we are standing. Uh, so this is a picture of some of the posters, but I'm going to show you one to show you uh, the kind of things that we did. Um, so we have the problem, yeah? Uh, and then we have the solution, global warming, pollution, economy. And, and so each student, we use Poster My Wall, which is free. We usually use free tools whenever possible, because we understand that uh, not all teachers and not all students have access to paid, uh, tools or apps. Uh, so most of the things I'm going to show you today are free applications and, and, and tools. Um, so Poster My Wall is a very easy to use uh, activity uh, website to create posters. And so this is an example. This is very simple, but still it was very useful for their classroom teacher, for year seven classroom teachers to start the discussion going on, okay? So we use the posters to get the discussion, to, to get the, the conversation started. Um, in year five, you will see that now we have jumped from March to May because I had to allow time for the classroom teachers to start working with the SDGs until I could grab them and apply something and do some application projects. So we are already in May. And for example, in year five, they created a quiz so on paper, they created a quiz uh, which was called How Environmentally Friendly Are You? 
and it had uh, 10 questions. And then we translated the quizzes, the paper quizzes uh, using Playbus um, to uh, interactive online quizzes that they could share uh, with others. So by others, we meant we put them on the school website and share them with the community. So they could share them with families who could take the quiz and have fun and learn something. Uh, so Playbus, if you are not familiar with Playbus, um, is, um, is the kind of quizzes you see on social media, on Facebook, like, like which character do you, which Disney character are you, or things like that. <laughs> uh, and uh, so what we decided is we were going to use the topic of the SDGs to create a quiz instead of a, a, a more superficial topic. Um, so this is not a tool created for learners, yes, but I was overseeing the process, so it worked fine. Um, okay, later, same month with year five, we created crossword puzzles and word searches. And you may say this is not very interactive, and it's true because uh, we created, uh, they created these puzzles and we printed them out, but there was a very good reason for printing them out. What we did is we put them up the walls around all the school, all these quizzes and the, the word searches and the crossword puzzles. And so any student whatsoever could go have a look and try to find a word or give an answer. To the, to the crossword puzzle. And so the idea was to get all the, student in, all the students in the school involved in thinking about these words, thinking about these concepts and this topic, okay? Uh, in this particular case, they were working on life on land, which is uh, the sustainable development goal number 15. And so all the, all the quizzes were related to that. Um, and so, uh, after some days, we could see that all these posters were scribbled, yes, that the, the word search puzzles and, and the crossword puzzles had been scribbled all over by, by students giving their answers. And it, it was lovely to see everybody interacting with them. Um, so here's one, it's bigger. So you can see they, they created the, the references and the tool. Uh, puzzle maker created the, the, the crossword puzzle automatically. So that was very easy. Uh, okay, crossword puzzles. Uh, before we go on, before we go on, uh, because I'm going to jump onto a different set of tools now, which are a bit more complex. So before I move on, are there any questions regarding what I've been talking so far? Uh, we don't have any questions, but um, in the chat, I'm just putting another uh, crossword maker uh, called X Words, which is also really Super. nice, as, along with uh, Puzzle Maker. So, um, no, but we haven't got any questions so far, but I would really encourage everyone to write their, their questions down. This is absolutely fascinating, Vicky. Thank you so much for showing us <laughs> how, you're, how you're integrating the SDGs into your, into your work. It's brilliant. So I'm sure we'll get some questions in a moment. Okay, no worries. So I'm going to move on, and this time I'm going to ask you again in the chat box um, if you've ever, if you, if you know anything about coding, because that's our next set of projects, uh, computational thinking and coding. Do you know anything about it? You don't need to be sorry. I didn't know anything about it myself like three years ago. So <laughs> no worries, no worries. And that's why I want to show it to the world because uh, whenever you say coding, people go like, oh no, that's too difficult. So how can I do that? Uh, so I'm going to show you that it, it can be uh, done in a very simple way and, uh, and it's very engaging for students. Um, Okay, Adeline, you are on my next question. If you have, if you have, uh, so um, I'm going to show you Scratch today, and then I'm going to show you something else. 
Uh, so I assume that you haven't used it with your classes and with your learners, right? So even if you know a little bit about coding, you haven't used it for language learning, right? Yeah. Okay, so then that's lovely because I have a, 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 a brilliantly uh, appropriate audience to teach you all this. Uh, so we're going to be looking at two things within coding. We're going to be looking at coding on a computer uh, using Scratch, which is a visual uh, blocks program. So it's quite simple. It's very visual. It's very easy. I have coded with Scratch from year three on. So uh, depending on what you choose to do, uh, it is doable with very young learners. Now, the good thing about Scratch is it was developed by the MIT. It is free and it is available in more than 60 languages, which means that of course, French, Spanish, German, modern languages, all of them are included in Scratch. So you can select the language in Scratch and you can uh, carry out your activities in the language you are teaching. So that's the first thing. Um, so essentially Scratch is, um, as I said, a programming language. And uh, so on one half of the page, you can see uh, what you are programming. And on the other half, you can see the actual result of what you're doing. Uh, and as Joe is saying, you have Scratch Junior apps that work on mobile phones. So that's super. Um, so I'm going to show you what I did with, with computational thinking and computer programming using Scratch, okay? Which is a, a combination of things. So the first thing we did was I taught my students how to animate characters. And I need to tell you this. In my school, uh, we wanted to do uh, coding with learners. And even before the SDGs, we wanted to spend the second half of the year uh, doing some kind of coding activities. And so I said, okay, if we have to do coding and we have to do SDGs, then I want to do both together. I want to code, uh, but I want to code with a meaning. All right. So, um, so I developed some ideas to combine both. So the first thing we did with year four, so we are talking about uh, nine year olds, mostly nine and 10 year olds, um, was to teach them to animate characters so that they could move and they could speak. Okay. So year four had been working on renewable, on energy sources, renewable and non-renewable. So what I did was I found some visuals about uh, the topic and I provided these visuals that they could use as a backdrop. So you can see all these visuals are the things I provided. And they added their own characters. They added their own characters and they made them speak and move and say something related to energy sources. So I'm going to show you one so you can see what happens. I'm not going to go backstage to the coding part yet. I want to show you the result, okay? Okay, so this looks very, very simple, but we are talking about nine-year-olds 
And this is the first coding they've ever done. Uh, so they could learn uh, how to add a back background, how to add a character, how to make him speak, how to move them. Yes. So uh, all these um, coding things like this take into account the idea of sequencing and knowing what happens first, what happens then, what happens later. And so what they add is different commands related to time, like wait, how many seconds, and then do this. And that's why you see a sequence of things going on, because they are timed, OK? Um, so uh, I think I may have made a mistake. And if you allow me a second, I'm going to stop sharing and start sharing again, but I'm not going away. But I think I haven't clicked the share with audio that I will need next. Wait, let me. You, you can do that in more options, Vicky. If you go up to the toolbar yeah. and click on more ah, options. Ah, your You're right. There yeah. we are. No worries. Yeah. We're all good. <laughs> Super. Okay. So, um, so basically, this is what we started with. Something very simple, but related to the topic they were working on. Okay. Let me show you the next. Uh, Okay, so with year five and in a similar fashion, we did animated text. And so I wanted them to put SDG and the number of the SDG they were working on because they had been working with three different goals. So they had to create a kind of poster uh, and, uh, and then they would add words coming out of the letters. Now I'll show you now, and some action. That is, they could add one character or two characters and make it move. So we were learning how to animate text and how to add characters and make them move using, or again, using a backdrop, okay? So let me show you uh, one of the examples. Very, very simple. Just the letters, uh, the words coming out and the polar bear moving, yes? But again, this is year five and it's the first thing they had ever done related to coding, okay? Um, so uh, I found that Scratch was lovely for storytelling. I, it, 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 I don't think it's a natural association, <laughs> but I found it was really interesting to explore storytelling through scratch so okay that's another example okay and so we came to okay we did basic things now with year six we i decided to do a story not just text and not not just one character but can you create a story related to one of the sdgs you are working on and you can see on the slide, I have put the SDGs that they were working on here. Um, and they could choose one of the SDGs and create a story related to it, okay? And I'm going to show you one of the examples. It, this one I love, but you can see some are related to life below water here or life on land, yes? Climate action. Okay, so let's have a look at the next. Can I just check, Vicky? Are we supposed to be hearing sound as well? Not yet. Okay, no problem. We've had a great question, by the way. How do you how did you teach your young learners the basic actions to use Scratch? <laughs> great question. Okay, um, Melcher, um, uh, Scratch uh, Scratch blocks are color coded to start with, which makes that easier to teach. So you know that the blue set of actions is movement. Um, then the purple one is the way things look. Uh, there's one related to sounds, 
There's one related to events like uh, if you click on the flag or when you click on the flag or when you touch certain key on the keyboard, this will happen. So they start by recognizing the different categories of colors. I don't teach them all the actions and all the possibilities. Um, we, what I do is I do a kind of problem solving approach to what we need to do. So I said, if we want to do this, what do we need? Uh, okay, I, 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 I want a character. Okay, so you need to know how to add a character. Uh, I, I want the character to speak. So I, I show them what the different commands for speaking. Um, what usually happens is that they make them speak and then all the characters speak at the same time. So then I teach them about sequencing. And I said, okay, you, do you want all of them to speak at the same time and say, no. So what do we do? Okay, we will ask those are commands that is wait, for example. So, so we insert the command wait, wait, and then speak. And, and so little by little, they start getting the more basic commands. And as they move on, they are the ones who ask me, but I want to do this. How do I do it? Okay. And we explore, uh, okay, what category do you think? What color do you think we need to be looking at? Do we need to be looking at movement, the blue ones? Do we need to be looking at the purple commands that are other things, yes? So um, we start looking at other options, okay? Uh, but I usually, uh, I don't usually go and say, do this, do this, do this, do this. I, 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 it's, not a, it's not a teacher guided activity. Is more of a, of a problem solving activity where they tell me what they need and we work out together how to do that, okay? Uh, you will see when we get to another project, it will be very clear. Uh, okay, so year two, it was only in August that I could get year two to do something. And I didn't want to do coding with them. Uh, how many do I have in my groups? I have, around from 18 to 22, something like that. So around 20, yes, around 20 students. Um, so uh, year two, I didn't want to do coding yet because they were not ready. Um, and they were preparing a song with their teacher called Do It Now. So what I said is we could use the green screen and Joe is a, a master of the green screen. So I'm not going to go into that into much details. I'm sure you've seen how to use a green screen before. So we recorded the students singing on a green screen, and then we added some backgrounds that had to do with the uh, do it now and taking care of the environment. So I'm going to show you just a little bit, and now there is sound. So <laughs> let me know if you can hear. We need to wake up. We need to wake up. Now. Planet, planet. I love that part. Right now. Now. Planet, planet. There has a problem. We need to solve it. Make it. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to show you the whole song, but this was year two singing. Uh, that was quite an experience, I can tell you. Okay, so um, then there was year six. So now we're going to get into more uh, complex types of um, projects. Yes. Uh, year six had started the year doing a composting project with their classroom teacher. So they researched what composting was about. They created the composting bin for the school. And so what we did was to create a campaign to teach all the school, all the students 
about composting so that all the students would use the composting bin in the school grounds. Uh, so what they, they did with me is they created posters, again, using poster my wall, they created posters uh, about different aspects of composting. Uh, we, we printed some of those posters and we put them up at school and they went class by class. Um, they visited all the other classes and they explained to the other students what composting was about and they showed the, the bin and how it could be used. And so we, we, we kind of uh, helped the composting uh, campaign. So let me show you one of the posters. You can see it here. Uh, these are the things you can compost. This was made by Bucci and Sebi. Um, so I could tell that this had an effect on students, which is when, when, when I told you at the beginning that we were looking for action, yes? not just telling people about it, but doing things about it. And you can see them here working on the bin. Um, uh, there was a teacher who brought the worms we need for the bin. And so it was great. It was really a great project. And I could tell there was an effect because my year one or even year two students came to my class after break and they were finishing an apple, for example, and they had the rest of their apple, the apple core in their hands. And they would look at me and say, oh, can I go and throw it in the composting bin? And so, of course, I had to let them go because, you know, that was a teaching opportunity. So a learning opportunity. So, yeah, go throw it in the, in the bin. It was far away, but it's okay, go throw it in the bin, come back. So you could see that even the little ones were really engaged with the composting bin and what could be thrown there and what couldn't. So uh, that was really, really interesting. Um, unfortunately, uh, when the pandemic came, nobody took care of the composting bin and it kind of died out. But I'm sure that year six teachers will, will, will do this project again next year because it was really, really a good one. Um, so, okay, our composting project. Um, and then with year seven in August, uh, they had been working on a lot of different goals uh, because, as I said before, the teacher had their teachers had realized that um, that the SDGs could be connected to almost everything they were working on, and so you can see here that they worked on pollution, gender equality, uh, climate change. So one day, what we did is okay. You have, um, you can create any story about any of the SDGs you have been working on, any animation, anything you want. I mean, it was more of a free project using Scratch. I wanted to see what they remembered about Scratch because we had used it the year before. So uh, we used um, Scratch to wrap up some of the ideas they had been working on. Um, with year three, uh, and we are already in September, with year three, uh, they had work, been working a lot on recycling. And so uh, I put together some uh, games, interactive games about sorting recyclables and the, 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 the theory behind it, which yes or no. And uh, so I created a Padlet and they could play some games related to all the knowledge they had gained about recycling. And I see there's a question in the chat. Okay, thank you. I, I, I'm happy you like it. Um, and so we are now going to go into our next set of, of coding projects. Yes, and, and I, I gave a little bit of a, of, a, of a peep into what I'm going to show you. But, so this is it. This is my micro bit box. And if you have never heard of the micro bit, I'm going to show you a little bit about what it is. Um, the micro bit, I'm going to open my box. I'm going to show you what I have. Okay. So this is the micro bit. 
So you can see it's what you have on the screen. Yes, it's very little, so you can see my hand. Yes. Um, the microbit is on sale. I have to tell you that this is something you need to buy. But the, the thing about the microbit is you can program it on, on for free. The, the, the programming language and the app is free. So you go on the website and you can program it. Um, it was bought by Microsoft to ensure, uh, well, I don't know, but it's still free. So it's good. Microsoft is involved. And uh, so what you do apart from coding on the screen, like we did with Scratch, is you get to program an object and the object does something. So um, we were interested in seeing the effect of programming on an object and see what kind of motivation it resulted in, resulted in students. Uh, because one thing is to code something on the screen and see it happen on the screen, which can be more ordinary or natural. Uh, but we wanted to show them that they could program something, put it here, put it on the card, and then the card would do something. Yes. And so the card essentially has, as you can see, it has the LED lights. Yes. Uh, it has two buttons, A and B. Uh, it has some connectors here that I'll show you what they are for, these holes. Yes, um, it has a USB connector here, a micro USB connector here to connect it to the computer to load the program or to connect it to uh, a portable a portable battery. Yes, you don't need to have the card um, attached to the computer all the time to make it work. You attach it to the battery and you take this and it works, okay? So the battery is here. Um, and uh, it also has, as you can see there, it has a Bluetooth connector. It has an accelerometer, which is quite important. You will see when we, we can move it and it will detect movement. Uh, it has a compass. And then you can buy a set of uh, accessories like this here is a, ah, it fell, but this here is a, a temperature sensor. So you can measure, uh, let me get it. This is a temperature sensor. Uh, you can also buy an accessory that's a speaker to produce sound, okay? Uh, I don't have it here, but I will show you a recording of, of what it looks like. And, um, and then uh, in, my, in my box, I want to show you my box because my box is full of stuff. I have uh, these connectors, yes? That I'll show you later what they are for. And I have a case. This is a case for the micro bit. So you insert the micro bit here and it protects it a little bit if you're working with, with very young learners. Uh, it's better not to to have them touch the micro bit so 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 much. So you put it in the in the box in the in the case. It's a silicone cage, a rubber. Yeah, so it works really well. So this is the micro bit, and you may say, ah, but what does it do? Do we need that? And I'm going to show you what we've done with it. Yes, uh, the micro bit. The micro bit website has loads and loads of lesson plans for different things you can do with it, okay? So I'm going to lead, lead you to that later, but I want to show you what I did. Uh, so let me go back. So this is what I did with year six. We coded a two option poll. A two option poll is a poll where you can answer a question either yes or no, uh, true or false, or any other two options. Yes, A and B. And so the two options would be the buttons A and B in the card, yes? And so what we coded is we would ask somebody a question, the person would press A or B to record their vote, and the microbit card would count the votes for 
A or B, or yes or no, or true or false or whatever, yes? So it would count the votes. And then at the end, it would give me here the numbers. How many votes for A, how many votes for B, yes? So we coded the two option poll here. And I'm going to, ha ha ha, do I have my cable? I hope I can show you. I'm not sure I can because the cable is very short. I don't think I'll be able to show you, but I'll try. I'll try. Nope, that's not what I want. Okay. Uh, oh, the cable is too short and I cannot show you what it's doing. So it's okay, I'll explain it. So um, what we did is we coded that in classroom. We went through uh, all these things that I explained. We went through with the class again as a problem solving activity. What would, do we want the card to be able to do? How do we do it? And we coded the card. Then you connect the card to the computer and you transfer the program to the card. The card can only hold one program at a time. So when you put something else, it deletes the previous one. It can only hold one program at a time. Um, so basically, this is what we did. We coded the card and then we asked, all the teachers from all the classes in the school to come up with one question related to the SDGs they had been working on that could be answered yes or no or true or false with two options. So we have the list of questions, yes? And so students went to the classroom, so not all the students to all the classrooms. So we divided the students and they were in groups of two or three to different classrooms, other, other groups to other classrooms. And they asked the students the question that their teacher had prepared and the students voted on the card. And then the card gave the results, okay? So the pictures you can see are, of course, the big ones here are my year six students, the small ones are year two in this particular case. Um, and in the first one, you can see um, at the end, the first picture shows at the very end of the activity when we were looking at the results in the card and they were writing down the answers that the card showed them, how many A's, how many B's. So we could see if, if they were right or wrong. So I'm going to show you a very short video where you can see Santino here, where you can see Santino uh, asking the students the questions and the students voting on the card. Okay, so this is what we did. Uh, we also put the question on the board so students could read it. They knew what the question was. They, needed, they knew what the options were for the answer. So yes or no in this case, and they could press uh, the card. So, <laughs> so um, this is another way in which we found we could mix students and make them do something and then use that for a learning opportunity for other students. So. Uh, we were all about trying to, uh, to, to extend the learning beyond the classroom itself, okay? So that was coding the two option poll. Um, now with year seven, uh, we, dis, uh, we have a, an edible garden at school, or we used to have it. Now it's kind of lost again due to the pandemic, but we, we, we are hoping we can recover it. So uh, we have an edible garden. And so we said, do you know when you need to water your, your edible garden? Do you need when? I said, no. Okay, why, why don't we create, uh, we program the card to measure the humidity in the earth. And then it will tell you uh, if it needs to be uh, watered or not. Okay. So this looks very, very complicated. Uh, so 
Hmm. What you can see in the pictures are students doing the preparatory measurements before we even started coding uh, the card. Why do I say that? Because we didn't know what the values were for wet or dry earth. So what we did was they brought, you can see in the picture, a pot with earth uh, and they started with dry earth and they would put, uh, let me show you the next slide so you see what I mean. So essentially we had a pot with the earth and two nails. And when you connect the connectors that I showed you before this, you connect the connectors to the card, it will show a number here, okay? So the first thing we did was read the numbers. And so we started with no water at all in the earth and we read the numbers and we started adding water little by little and we created a chart, which you can see in the second picture with the values that the card showed, okay? So the value that, the, that it showed was different as we were adding more and more water to, the, to it, to the pot. So we ended up with a list of values from driest to wettest, yes? And then we decided, okay, what, what is the, I, I did a lot of research on my own, of what is the cutting value for wet and dry? You say, okay, at, that, at this number, the earth, it's too dry, we need to water it. And at this number, it's too wet, don't do anything, yes? And so once we found what was the limit, we programmed the card, we programmed the card to measure the humidity and produce a sound or tell us a smiley face if it was okay, or a sad face if it needed water. So it would read the humidity and it would tell us, okay, do you need to water it or not? Okay. Uh, let me show you that in action. So this is the device. And now this is the actual, oh, let me go back, sorry. This is the actual coding that I wanted to show you. It looks a bit complicated, yes, but what it says is that analog red pin is the connectors that I showed you before. So what we are saying is we are asking to read, we are asking the card to read this, and this is the maximum value, yes? So this is the maximum value we got when we tested, yes, and it was completely wet, yes? And the cut value was, if it was 300 or less, it needed water. If it was 900 or more, it was okay. Yes, uh, sorry, uh, uh, yes, it was okay. It, was, it had enough, enough water. Um, so you press the button and it reads and it tells you. Yes, you press button A, it reads the humidity and it tells you. If the number is below 300, it will produce a certain sound, which tells you you need to water it. If it produces, uh, if it shows a number above 900, it will produce another sound that says it has enough water. Okay, uh, let me show you the video. Press A. One, zero, two, two, uh, and it's wet, okay? It's wet. Good. So we tried this in the football field. That is a football field. We tried that in places where the earth was really dry to see if it really worked because we had tried it in the computer lab, but we wanted to know if we went really outside and we tried it, would it measure it correctly? And so you see in this case, as they were doing it, the number appeared there in red and it was 1022, which was really wet, okay? And then we went to other parts of the field and it was dry, okay? We went to parts that were sunny all day and the earth was dry. So we created a moisture sensor using the microbit. Yeah, that was year seven. And 
I want to see, oh, time's running out, but I want to show you something else. Um, okay. Press A. Okay, let me show you the last thing we did with year four and five. This is a game that you can download from the uh, United Nations SDGs website, yes? Uh, it's a board game and it asks questions about the different uh, so, uh, sustainable development goals. And we wanted the year four and year five classes to play the game. So we say, what can we do with the micro bit? And so what we did with the micro bit is, first we created a dice, yes? And remember when I was telling you about problem solving, uh, what I did with the dice, was I asked the students, okay, do you know what a die is? What does it do? Okay, a die, what does it do? Uh, how many numbers has it got? What do we do with the dice? We throw it, we roll it, yes? And it gives us a number. Essentially, that's what the dice does. So we said, we need to program the card to act as die, yes? And so, this is what they came up with. They said, okay, when we shake the card, so on shake, show us a number. What number? Pick a number, pick a random number between one and six. The students coded this. It looks very simple when you see it's only three commands, but it took a lot of thinking about what a dice does, how many numbers it has, what do we do when we roll the dice? Yes, and to come up with the appropriate commands to make the card work as a dice. So when you shake the card, it produces a number from one to six. You shake again, it produces another number, okay? Uh, so that was the first thing we did. With one card, we had a dice. With the other card, we had a sound warning to say if the answer the students gave when they landed, remember the board game? They landed on different places. They had to answer a question. And so we created a sound warning to show them if the answer was right or wrong. So we had a game master who knew the answers and the game master would handle, would handle the sound warning device. And let me show you what it was like. So that's correct. And if you press the other, it's incorrect. Yeah, very simple. And as you can see here, we have the extra, the, the accessory, which is the speaker. Yes. So here we have the battery that I showed you at the beginning. We have the micro car, micro big card inside the case. And we have the warning, the, the speaker. So the students programmed it to give different sounds according to whether A or B was pressed. Okay. And here you have the day we played. So we have the counters here. We improvised uh, different uh, things for counters. And here we have the dice, the number five. And here we have the sound warning system. And so all the students were sitting around this big, big, big board game that we put on the floor. And we played the sustainable development games uh, goals game at the end of the year with years four and five using the micro bit cards as accessories. So <laughs> I think I'm done and it's very late. Can I please ask you for your feedback for this session? You can put it in the chat box. You don't need to go to Slido if you don't want to. Um, I'm, I'm, I hope uh, I, I, I wish I had more time to explain how to program and how to do things with each of these things. All I can tell you is it's very easy. It's easier than I thought. Uh, it took me a couple of months of uh, tinkering with it myself. Uh, and then I could go into the classroom and do some activities. Um, so I am very grateful that you invited me uh, to share my ideas with you today. And uh, I want to thank you, Joe and Tilt, for having me. You're very welcome. Amazing. Um, I've just got a f I've got a few questions that come to mind. I mean, so you you're saying that you're you work in a bilingual school, is that right? Yeah. 
right so with these sorts of activities are the other children very good already at english i'm just thinking from a language learning point of view is there any sort of um uh um any activities you have to do beforehand to uh, tell them about any vocabulary or are they able to uh, is it sort of like an example of target uh, of um uh project-based learning would you say th this sort of approach yeah. Yeah, uh, they, they have uh, the, with their classroom teacher, they work with a course book. So it's very traditional and uh, and they start English in kindergarten. Uh, so they, they have been uh, in contact with English from year th from three when they were three years old. So even though in year one, they cannot read and write, they can speak. OK. And so you saw that I didn't have many activities for the first years for the very, very young learners. But as soon as they start picking up language, it's very easy to do these kinds of projects because they have the language they need. Um, and so, I mean, for me, it was more important to teach them about critical thinking and, 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 and solving a problem and, and these kinds of things. And of course, using their second language to do it, not just the first. Fantastic. And so do you think that that challenge really helped them to uh, learn new vocabulary or or to, well, as you say, you know, problem thinking, uh, pro um, problem solving and critical thinking? Absolutely. But do you think this sort of this sort of approach really helps them with their language because it gives them well, the challenge to 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 complete the task and, and to the, the requirement that they have to use English in order to do that? They do. They do. And, and in fact, uh, they, they, they've learned a lot of very specific vocabulary, for example, for the commands, for the programming, for example. Um, and of course, working with SDGs, they learned a lot of vocabulary about the environment and all the different things that they were working on. So indeed, their language has improved. And I have a lot of students who went home and started using Scratch on their own. Brilliant. Miss, do you know I, I did this on Scratch and I did this. And so I think it's really interesting because if you teach them that they can set the Scratch to the language, they can work on Scratch in English or French or Spanish or whatever. And it helps with their language learning too. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, it's obviously been a huge amount of work you've done uh, for this. And I love the way you've mapped it all to the... Uh, the SDGs um it's just yeah it's one I mean what what would you say about the workload it, has it been has it been no, a huge amount of work it seems like it's been a huge amount of work but no uh, uh, as I said uh, I learned about uh the microbit card card in let's say February of that year and uh by ha by the mid-year I was already using it and I mean I had experimented with it and I had tried it I said, okay, I'm ready to go in and see what happens, really. And, and it worked. It worked. Uh, and we don't have one for each student. We have, uh, we have about six cards. So it's not a huge expense. We have huge cards and they work in groups. And they, the, the work on the computers is, of course, for everybody. And then when they are ready, I take a card to that computer and we test if it works on the card. So uh, yes, it's, it's very doable. It's very doable. And it is really something when they see, for example, very silly, but the dice, when they see that the numbers appear here, when they shake the card, it's like, oh, it works. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. And are they quite delicate, the, um, the micro bits? I mean, did you have any issues with them getting damaged at all? Or were the children respectful towards them? No, they were very respectful, and so I did buy the I, I did buy the 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 cases. But uh, year seven didn't use the cases; they used the bear the bear cards, and it was fine. Year six too, um, I I used the cases for the for the younger ones just in case. Yeah, yeah. But no, they're yeah. pretty sturdy. I mean, <laughs> I, you can you can touch it, and uh, nothing happens. They're really fantastic. Good. We've had some lovely comments in the chat. We've had, uh, thank you. It was very interesting. I'm mes mesmerized with all these activities. <laughs> oh, That's lovely. Super. Really interesting. Thank you. I'm going to show this to our IT teacher who also teaches French. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. It, I mean, would you would you say this could be an approach um, used in conjunction with CLIL, for example, of this sort of like Absolutely. Activity? Absolutely. Yeah. With CLIL and with CLIL. And if you have an IT teacher at school, things you can do. Uh, um, I mean, I'm kind of an IT teacher and an English teacher. So, so it works perfect for me. Uh, I know my 
the English teachers look at me and they say, what is it that you're doing? They don't understand. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, as I'm into technologies, for me, it's kind of a, of a, a challenging thing to, to learn to do. Um, and so, no, it really works. It, 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 it did work. I, I mean, I had, I also had my reservations when I started. It was like, okay, we'll see if it works. Mm. And it did. It well, it's been it's been great. I love the way that you've shown the progression from the younger ones, the older ones, and the challenges and and what have you. It's been it's been fantastic. It's been absolutely fantastic. I'm going to give people the opportunity if they want to turn their microphones on and their videos on now. Super. We are still recording, just to let people know. But if you want to ask a, a question directly, you don't have to. But if you'd like to, then uh, I'm going to give you the opportunity now. If you want to ask anything um, on your microphone or on your video, uh, feel free to do so. Um, I'll just give you everyone a moment now, if you'd like to do that, or put it in the chat if you'd like to. Uh, people might be feeling a bit shy, I don't know. But um, okay, I think people are being a bit shy, which is fine, which is fine. So I, I'd like <laughs> to officially okay. okay. uh, like like to... thank you, Vicky, for, for, for thank this. It's been uh, and, and lovely. Well, my details are there. Keep in touch. If you have any specific questions that you couldn't come up with now, but come later uh just send me an email uh or whatever uh twitter anything oh i'm i'm online <laughs> <laughs> fantastic okay well i'm gonna stop recording right now but for, but before i do that just yeah a huge thank you vicky we, i can see how much work you put into this presentation and it's really inspirational and it's something very different i think from what we've normally done in tilt webinars we had we had one other session from wes fryer from the states about a little bit about coding mm -hmm. Uh, in Spanish yeah. Um, yeah. and it was it with in um, in Wes's uh, case he hadn't uh, taught Spanish before he'd been basically asked to uh, uh, do some supply work to cover for a teacher so he had to put his Spanish um, into uh, in, into place pretty quickly and so he decided to do a project do a bit of scratch and so I think what what you've done tonight is you've really taken us to the next level so those people who want us to, to see Wes's recording it's on my YouTube channel but this is absolutely Super. taking us to the next level. So thank you so much, Vicky. You've given us something really different and from what we've done. One more had. thing I wanted to say is that we may have a preconception that coding is more interesting for boys. And I want to tell you that it's not. It, I mean, I have lots of girls who are and they try things out and they come and said, you know, I've been doing this and that. So don't be afraid amazing and that's a great message to finish with as well thank you so much vicky it's been awesome i'm going to hit it stop now and uh, thank you for your time and thank you to everyone you, for everybody. coming along thank you joe it's been it's been lovely no you, it, my pleasure uh, absolute pleasure thank you so much vicky take care enjoy yes. the rest of your your day and for everyone yeah. else enjoy the rest of your evening bye for now super thank you very much thank you